Hello, my name is Sue Lewis and I'm going to run you through this webinar. So this is all about the Career Power Pathway Planner and that is a triage model and tool that will help you match personal guidance to the individual needs of students. So this is something we developed through a bid to the Careers and Enterprise Company and we piloted it um, last academic year and now it's available for other schools to use. So just to introduce myself, my name is Sue Lewis and I head up the Career Power team. So the website uh, can, can be accessed to careerpilot.org.uk. So what I'm going to do in this webinar is explain the three-stage Pathway Planner model. I'm going to show you all the data and reports the Pathway Planner can generate and explain how you can access the Pathway Planner. So just to explain, Career Pilot is our main thing and that has four zones. They're all web-based tools. Um, the student zone is where everything launches from. And then we have a reporting zone which has all the data and reports the students generate by making their choices. We have an advisor zone with lots of lesson plans and materials and also a parent zone. We are an award-winning website. 2018 we won the CDI award. So career path is the main thing, but I haven't got time to talk about that in this webinar because this is specifically focused on the Pathway Planner, which is really an add-on to the main career pilot area. So in the student zone, if you're a Pathway Planner school, school or college, you'll see a, a Pathway Planner link and you'll be able to see data in the reporting zone and in the advisor zone there'll be lesson plans and materials you can use. So just to explain a little bit about funding, in this geographical area, Career Pilot is free to use apart from for next academic year in the Hampshire, Dorset, Isle of Wight area. Previously, subscriptions were paid by the Sun UniConnect. They are not able to pay that next year, but they have said you can use any outstanding Sun money to pay for your subscriptions in 2021-22. But in that other part of the green area, then Career Pilot, the four zones are free for you to use. And of course, somebody somewhere pays. So 14 universities and five UniConnects pay subscriptions to enable it to be free for schools and colleges in that area. Whatever you are, whether you're in or out of our area, you have to pay to add the Pathway Planner onto your school or college Career Pilot site. If you're outside this zone, then you pay for Career Pilot and then you add on the Pathway Planner if you choose to. So just to explain Career Pilot in overview, I've got time to go through the whole thing. But uh, Career Pilot is very much about developing a whole school approach to careers with the students at the centre. So it's all about trying to make students um, managers of their own careers. And we do that by having different activities for every year group that progressively build up their skills, but also help them to think about key decisions. If you're a careers leader, there's lots in career power to help you with your role, putting a stable careers programme together, having a progressive build-up of resources and, and support for young people. For example, we have what we call our three-stage career process that we teach to students so they can use that whenever they have to make a career decision in their lives. I've got, I said, activities for every year group, but we also got lots of resources to support that, like five-week PSHE programmes, etc. But also as a careers leader, you're trying to engage all the other staff and all the other players in promoting careers. So Career Park can be a great tool to signpost people too, like tutors might be helping delivery, you want to tell parents about careers, subject teachers, there's activities they can use. But it's all leading towards personal guidance and having all that information and support for the students so that you can actually provide effective guidance. Pathway Planner comes in in year 11 and 12, although I know some schools are using it now at the end of uh, June, May, June time with your 10s, getting them ready for next year. So in terms of the whole school approach, as I said, activities for every age group. So if you clicked on one of these, the year eight ones would be for sort of five or six activities we suggest year eight do. And to support that, there's the presentations you can deliver to introduce those activities based on about a 50 minute lesson. A lot of these are recorded as video lessons too. If you have the Pathway Planner, we've got slightly different ones for your 11 and 12, the building using the Pathway Planner with the students. And then there's all the wraparound resources like the five week PSHG programmes to the green ones. Little pink ones are 20 minute activities you could do in two to time that don't require a computer. They're all careers, related to careers. Then we've got activities for subject teachers so they can relate an, as an actual aspect of the curriculum. They are already delivering to careers 
23 for key stage 4, 23 for key stage 5. And then other things like our hot jobs posters, which you can post out a job of the week, uh, and loads of other things besides. Okay, that was a quick roundup of Graypal. There's an awful lot in the site. What I'm going to focus in on now, though, is the Pathway Planner. So we've got different versions. We've piloted a version for year 11 and 12 as part of our project, and since then we've developed a version for colleges. Everything goes from Career Pilot from the student area. Um, this is free access, so anybody across the country can use this, any young person. But if you're a subscriber, then you can get your students to register and their data will be added to your school and they can access the career tools. So this is, this is where they can build their report. So if they see job sectors they're interested in or jobs, they can add them. And that creates a report for them that they can flex and change. But also all that data is there for you to look at the reporting zone. So you can see, for example, what job sectors your 12s are interested in, for example. At the top of the screen, you can access the advisor zone, the parent zone. And uh, then our popular tools are on that light blue line, like job profiles, course, apprenticeship vacancy search, etc. There's our three-stage process, start with you, explore your options, plan your next steps, but students can also get into the detail of a particular pathway they're interested in. And we're all trained careers advisors behind career pilots, so we're very passionate about getting the right information and advice to young people. So the three-stage process I mentioned, so activities um, to start with you, so find out about your interests, your motivations, and there's a quiz to find out what job sectors might suit you, start with the subject theory might lead, do our skills map, we've got a pre and post exam version to help students recognise they already have a lot of skills and how they can use them, or they can plan their qualifications on a ladder. And then they can explore in a range of different ways, by age or by jobs or course search or apprenticeship vacancies. And there's over a thousand video stories in the site all tied into qualifications and um, jobs. Then it's how you can use that information to plan your next steps. You can look at your report, you can look at your skills map, and we've got an ongoing action plan. I suppose just set one action point to the students whenever we do a session, which is all about trying to help them think, I'm going to do one thing to manage my career. So even before we had um, the Plathay Planner, we always used the report before guidance because it told us a lot about the students, it can be quite detailed. You can also, at the end, write your advisor report straight onto the site, and then it's visible to the students and any other staff member who's got access. That report moves up with the student every year, and they can take it to another institution that's got career pilots. They give, they in charge it, they have their account until they're 21, so they can port it into different places. We've also got a dashboard view, which is like a summary. You can see in the bottom right, it's got the pathway plan results. So when we put our bid to the Careers and Enterprise Company, we had to show how we met Gatsby 8, which is obviously a careers guidance interview before they 16, another one after. But also we had to show how our bid met the criteria of quality guidance. And these are the sort of five things that are identified through this Careers and Enterprise Company report called Personal Guidance What Works. So this is our model. Uh, so it's, it's specifically aimed at year 11, 12, 13, although, as I said, some schools are doing it late in year 10. So the pre-guidance session is like a 50-minute session where they've got access to IT. And in this session, I'm going to show them the different options available to them. So we see 11 is about post-16, year 12, post-18. Now, we know the schools have done lots of things to build the kids up and understand about options. But on this one occasion, we're going to make sure everybody in that room knows all the next stage options. And we're going to give them some time on career pad to explore the ones they're interested in. And for the last 10 minutes, we're going to get them to the pathway planner. And we're going to now ask them what pathways they're interested in. And then we're going to get them to do a quiz to see how ready they are for their pathway. They'll get red, amber, green score. And then in the orange bit here, we can use all that data in order to target guidance the three different levels of need. And then about four weeks after guidance, a tutor follows up, takes about five minutes, by asking three questions. And wrapped around this model is at least one lunchtime a week of drop-in. And that drop-in mops up any additional need for guidance. So if a tutor refers them, them or they refer themselves, or they request e-guidance, um, then that can be mopped up through the drop-in. So I'm just going to run you through some of that. So the first 
uh, stage of this is this pre-guidance session. So it's key. It is really good if they've been introduced to all their options. And this is just a sort of summary session where you're just reminding them rather than try and teach them all the options at this point. But it is really useful, we found, for making sure they did know what their options were. Then they're going to have some time on Create Pilot, and then they're going to do the Pathway Planner. So I'll just show you how they work. So this is a speed lesson. Really. I'm just going to show you. We've designed some of the lessons, um, which can be used by schools so they could adapt them. This is for the 12 students. It starts with a fun thing. What values are you particularly interested in? Making the point that if you know what your values are, what drives you, you can find a course or career to fit you. We then show them our three minute animated video, and this is trying to show them why they need to become managers of their own careers. It's only about three minutes long, and it has four key things in it. Know yourself, your motivations, your interests, your values. Do stuff to build your CV and your skills. Know all your options, use your supporters. So then we run through those things. Know yourself. So there's a whole section about starting with yourself, and they could do some of these activities. We tell them which ones to do. Do stuff. Make the point that you know we know these things are number one priority, but you know don't forget all the other things you might be doing. These are the things that might show you as different from the people with the same qualifications. Know all your options is the focus of this 50-minute session, and then we would run them through levels, pathways, where they might be now, what they could do next, how all, all things lead to a degree if that's what they want to do. But this is what we're focusing on, moving from level two to three or three to four. And then we would run them through the different pathways. So we'll have little quizzes. How do you become a nurse? Is it through a degree or apprenticeship? You can do both. A dentist, just the one. Solicitor, two. And then just key points. You have to find out if an apprenticeship exists. So we've got a tool for doing that. You then have to find an apprenticeship. So just these key things to summarise their option choices. Then they get some time on career palette, have a little look, about 30 minutes. We tell them what's worth looking at. And then we're going to explain that we're going to, they're going to do the pathway planner. So this is where we're going to ask them now what options they're interested in. And do they're going to do a quiz to tell them how ready they are for that pathway. So it appears here if you're a, a, a pathway planner school. This is the one for post um post 16 students so this is by their post 18 pathways shows them the different pathways they can say i'm definitely considering not doing if they say definitely considering they do a quiz and that ask them um questions about how ready they are for that pathway i know what course subject i want to apply for i want to go to university but the cost is putting me off so these questions uh, are classic things that if they haven't done them or they don't know them that will affect their ability to make a successful transition. So at the back end, we've red flagged some of these. They don't see the score, but what they get is a red, amber, green score. So this student's definite about university, but they're amber, so there's obviously some gaps there. They're also considering a friendship. They're red for that. When we decide how to allocate guidance, we always go by the definite pathway, but use all available other information. You know, if you knew that their grades weren't up to university currently, you might give them a longer session because you want to explore that a bit. So it's not just about the pathway planner. But everybody's going to get guidance, which is obviously Gatsby 8. And we have three different levels of guidance. So in our pilot, um, if they were green, they got a 20 minute check -a plan. If they were amber, they got 30 minutes. If they were read for a definite pathway or had additional needs or would definitely want to do apprenticeships, we would usually give them the longer level of guidance. Um, and you can tag you can tag additional needs in the site as well. Um, if you found that that level of guidance didn't kind of work, you could always put them into drop in if they weren't as green as maybe they'd indicated, for example. So that's quite easy for the students to do. What it does is give you lots of information you can use then to intervene and support the students in getting ready for progression. So this is the other side of the system, the reporting zone. If you sign up for Career Pilot, four zones, you get the orange bit, which is by how you manage your users and set up groups. And then you get the blue bit, which are all the reports from the main Career Pilot site. But if you're a Pathway Planner School, you also get the pink bit, where you can see results and bookings. So for any group you've set up, a tutor group um, or your group, then you can see a dashboard of what their choices are. They didn't do it in year 11, this group. They did it post 16. 
So now I can see what they're interested in and how ready they are for that pathway. I can tag additional needs, so that means that that student's going to get the highest level of guidance. I see that quite visually. And there's certain actions you could perform against the individual student. Once you've set up guidance, you'll be able to see here in summary whether you've done it, which will be pink, or whether it's coming up, which is green. So let me just show you some of the actions. So you can view their answers, so it could be useful to find out if there's a common sort of element among that stopping students progressing across you know, maybe eight students have got an issue about the funding, so you might get them together and do a group work session, for example. You could view a timeline, which shows where they are um, in their uh, use of the Pathway Planner in terms of getting ready for progression. You could book guidance. You could do what we call the progression follow-up, which is like a one-liner after guidance. So you could summarise where they are after they've had that intervention. The tutor follow-up can be um, done from here and then the advisor comments can be added, or you can view any other advisor comments from a previous advisor or a tutor, for example. Just show you some of those. So booking's quite easy. You put in what it's called in your school, careers, guidance, whatever. Um, date, time, and then what sort of guidance it is. We won't dump the minutes here, because every school and college will be different. So you can say long, medium, check-in, drop-in, self-referral, tutor referral, e-guidance and you can also put in where parents referred them as well. You can also see another report which shows all your bookings so you can then um, download that if you want to. You can sort your list alphabetically by student or by date or type. The other nice thing you could do is add did not attend and that will appear on the student's timeline as well. So this is the timeline. So this is summarising the kind of journey, if you like, of using the Pathway Planner. So on the 28th of November, this student was, if you like, two reds and amber. They had a, then had a long guidance intervention. At the end of guidance, it's key to get them to go and edit their responses on the Pathway Planner. So you want to see that they're moving on and they feel more confident. And in this case, the student is now green and amber. So if you're a guidance advisor, then there's loads of information here to help you with guidance. So it can really make your guidance much more efficient. So you don't have to run through all the options. We've got covered that. You can really focus in on the particular things that a student needs. So to help you, you've got the whole career pilot report. You've got the pathway planner report and you've got the answers to the questions. You can see what might be a particular thing they might need to focus on. You can also, as I said, write your report. Onto the, onto the site. You can also um, do some action points. The students can do them themselves or you can do them with them. And then there's the follow-up. So about four weeks after guidance, somebody will follow up, like a tutor, head six, whatever. And if they're concerned about the students, they can pop them back in for guidance. So the tutor training, we've got a recorded session, takes about 20 minutes. Uh, we, what we want tutors to ask three questions. Are you clear about which pathway? How are you getting on with your actions? Do you feel you have the information you need to move on in your chosen pathway? And if they're concerned about them, they could pop them back in for a drop-in session. So they're not going to get another whole hour, but they might get a drop-in. If they're just missing a few actions, not, that's not a reason to refer them. But if they're confused about their pathways, then um, that certainly might be. So mentioned the one-liner report, the progression follow-up. So you could do a summary, one-liner, as they leave guidance, um, which says where they are now. So it might say, yeah, they're definitely about A-levels. These are the subjects they want to do. And you could say whether they're lightly, firm, borderline for getting the grades. And add another pathway on if they've got, still got something else in mind as well. The tutors can simply go in and say, yes, I've done the follow-up. Yes or no, this student needs additional guidance. We were interested to know whether the different levels of guidance uh, were useful to the student. And what you can see from this, there wasn't a great lot of difference between whether they got green, amber, red. You know, they did seem to get the right level of guidance in most cases. Obviously, there will be some exceptions to that, but that's why the drop-in really helps. In terms of the timing of the guidance, in over 80% of cases, the students are saying that was enough for them. It's interesting, the reds often wanted more. We got great feedback about this. Senior leaders loved it because they thought it was quite strategic. Uh, the guidance advisor felt they had a lot more information and could start higher up the food chain in, in, in some respects because the students had got their options sorted or they'd 
understood about them so the guidance advisor could really focus in on what were the particular things that that student really needed to focus on. So if you're interested in the Pathway Planner, let me just tell you how you can access it. If you're in a free to access area, as I showed you on that map earlier on, which is all the southwest, uh, apart from Dorset, and then um, most of um, the Berkshire, um, Milton Keynes, Oxford area, uh, apart from, so the only areas in this that are not covered are Hampshire, and Dorset and the Isle of Wight, and then we don't cover Sussex either. So if you're in that free to access area, you pay £250 to add the Pathway Planner to your site if you're a school, or 400 if you're a college. You then get training, which is compulsory, where we show you how to set up the site for the Pathway Planner. You get access to all the materials. If you're outside, um, if you want to know more about the Pathway Planner, on the advisor zone, top left of homepage, there's a whole tile about it. So if you're outside the area, you will need to subscribe to Career Palette and then add on the Pathway Planner. So the subscription for all four zones that gives you access to lots of materials, the reporting zone is 599 per annum. And then if you add on the Pathway Planner, it's an additional 200. And if you're a college, you can see there, there's a, a different charge. And special schools is less. So just want to show you quickly what else you get access to. If you become a subscriber, you get access to the whole of the advisor zone. Some things are free to access anyway, but we do have a members area, which is only available if you've got a login to the reporting zone. Then you can access our five-week PSHE programs and all the resources. Um, hot jobs I mentioned before include a new pack specifically by the NHS with 20-minute two-to-time activities focusing in on some of those jobs. Uh, we've got lots of things to support Gatsby, maps showing how you can use Gatsby and um, Career Palace part of Gatsby or to help you meet campus. But also this is a new one which shows how you can integrate Career Pilot in a school and that is quite a strategic way of, of meeting Gatsby. Uh, we've also got a 20 minute uh, quick careers which is especially pertinent this year when careers maybe hasn't had much time as you would normally be able to give to it. So these two 20 minute tutor time activities for every year group would just help students who at least have some sort of careers interventions this year. We've also got career guides um, for law, dentistry, veterinary science as well. These are areas have changed quite a lot recently. So this love the latest LMI and latest routes into those professions. Okay, so if you do want to sign up for the Pathway Planner, if you go to the Advisor Zone, which I've shown you here, click on the Pathway Planner, you will see here you can sign up for the Pathway Planner. And when you sign up, we, you'll be asked what training date you want to attend. It's about a two hour training session, all done through Teams, but that will help you set up your site. If you want to find out more about Career Pilot, the main part of the site, there's absolutely tons of stuff in there. Then we've got a whole series of webinars and they're all free and they are available again through the Advisor Zone. There's a tile called Free Training and you can sign up to one of our webinars. We do also have a helpline, it's available from 9 till 3 in term time and that's a useful first point of call if you want to ask a question or you want to get access to a reporting zone or whatever it might be. So thank you so much for listening. Um, do get in touch with the helpline if you're interested in moving forward or just look on the advisor zone and sign up through that.